love she traveled. I know women who made a difference. Acrylic Kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview of Mary Lou Gerke, conducted by Josh on April 19th, 2007. Now you're getting it? Yeah. Okay. So, I was born and raised in La Crosse, up on Tabba Grandin, on a farm. Um, with, and I'm from a family of 12. So. <laughs> um, yeah. You, what? My dad was from See, there used to be bigger families. Now, how many do you have in your family? Three. Yeah, that's more what the norm is, but yeah. So, um, yeah, um, and I went to Blessed Sacrament for grade school and Aquinas for high school and the Terrible for my bachelor's degree in nursing. And um, then I got my master's degree in nursing from Winona State and my master's in arts from um, the Fielding Graduate Institute in Santa Barbara and my doctorate from the same school in so Santa Barbara California and um, my base profession is nursing and kind of kept on that track so um, talk, can you tell me about your family background for me to understand some of the things that like influenced your life um, sure so I think being raised on a farm was very influential in my life uh, and being raised in a large family. We all um, worked on the farm together so we took care of the animals and did the milking and did the harvesting and we all did it together so I learned um, how to work hard and uh, how to work with a group um, and we were a Catholic family so we had um, of course a lot of influence from religion and God and nature and so I think um, that created a, a wonderful base for me as far as values what what are my values and what gifts and talents I can give back so hey okay. um, what did you like about school and what was like your favorite subjects Ooh. Um, okay I think when I was younger um, when I first started school, it was probably being around a lot of other people that were my same age. That was kind of cool. And um, I always enjoyed um, art and music and English and history. I wasn't real excited about math or science, but as I grew into high school and college, because I wanted to be a nurse, I had, you know, I started having to really work hard at math and science. And I liked biology more than chemistry. And because there's a big difference, biology was more meaningful to me because we studied plants and we studied animals and then we, of course, studied human beings. And so um, those areas I enjoyed a lot. But I did also enjoy uh, American literature and English. Sister Thea Bowman taught me. Um, American literature and I was torn between becoming a nurse or going into journalism and um, for instance I was the editor of the Aquinas yearbook and um, but in my heart of hearts I knew that I needed to go into nursing and that's where I ended up at the terrible um, like what made you want to become a nurse um, when I, you know, th that was in the era of, uh, I graduated from Aquinas in 1970, and really, women at that time, and you probably hear this over and over and over, I mean, there wasn't the choices that we, you have today as a woman, so it was usually focused on nursing, teaching, and uh, perhaps being a secretary or something like that. Uh, I think nursing, my older sister was a nurse an LPN and um, she had quite a bit of influence on me and I, I don't know I think it was just um, my spirit that told me that's the profession to go into. If it was today I don't know if it would be the same because you have so many more choices and um, but I'm glad I didn't went into nursing and it's been a very rewarding profession so. Um, like how 
how long did it take you to become a nurse? Actually, the program at Viterbo, I started in 1970 and I graduated in 1974. It was a four-year baccalaureate program. They had just changed from a three-year program to a four-year program. And so when I graduated in 1974, I started as um, an RN, and you, had a, you still have to sit for a state board a licensure exam. But um, you could start right into working as a staff nurse, and that's what I did at St. Francis on a med surge floor. I wanted OB, but there wasn't any openings. And so I started on med surge. And I'm glad I did today. I mean, sometimes you got to just let somebody that's got more power than you, uh, this entity, decide where you're going to go in. So I'm glad that I ended up on MedSurge because then eventually I, I went to critical care into St. Francis Intensive Care Unit. And I stayed there for a while as a staff nurse, and then I decided I wanted to get some experience that was a little bit um, larger in scope. So I moved to Minneapolis, and I worked at North Memorial Hospital in their intensive care unit, and they had a lot more trauma patients, and they had a lot more open-heart patients, because at that time, nobody in La Crosse was doing open-heart. And I worked there for about three years, and I came back to La Crosse, and uh, went back to St. Francis, but in a different role. It was a nursing role, but it was to educate other nurses. And I stayed there for a couple of years, and then the manager position in the intensive care unit at Lutheran opened, and I applied and started my journey on management. And uh, I've been at Gunnarsson Lutheran for since 1980, so I've been there a long time. And um, uh, a big bulk of the time there, I've been, I was the head nurse in, the, in their intensive care unit. Then my role expanded to include the pre-operative area, the operating rooms, the post-operating uh, area, and anesthesia. So I had that for, you know, about five years. And eventually, four years ago, I applied and uh, became the vice president of clinical operations. And now I have a whole different... <laughs> Role, I'm, you know, nursing still is very important to me, but I um, am responsible for the 40 regional clinics, ambulatory clinics all over the 19 counties, um, OB, pediatrics, and uh, behavioral health, and family medicine. So I stay busy. <laughs> um, how have your experiences as a nurse affected your life? Um, oh, man. <laughs> In every way, in every way. Um, from basically caring for people, um, pa people I don't know, so patients and their families, um, I care, f I use that knowledge to care for my friends and my family. I use that knowledge to look at the health of our community. And actually, I can't think of any component in my life that nursing doesn't affect. So it's uh, a great, it has been a great profession because it's, it's, it's met all my values and um, the need for me to give, and um, I, I use it every day, every day. Um, did you want to be become a nurse all your life? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, if you weren't to become a nurse, what do you think you would have done? Well, I had a full scholarship. When I graduated from Aquinas, I had um, an offer, a full four-year scholarship to go to Eau Claire in journalism. And at that time, so that would have been 1970, um, I'm not sure where that would have let, led me. I mean, um, you, you know, you could work in newspapers, you could write books, um, you could do what you guys are doing. Um, so I probably would have went into journalism of some type to do writing. Um, uh, did you ever think of like just stopping or quitting nursing? Or doing else? <laughs> wow. Um, no, there was uh, there was uh, you know the stopping in nursing. I think what's 
for me, it was changing what I did as, as a nurse. And in nursing, you can, you can take care of patients in all the different specialties. You can be a pediatric nurse. You can be an OB nurse. You can be an intensive care nurse. And there was enough variety in nursing that I could, do, I could change what I was doing and yet stay a nurse. So I could be a manager and be a nurse. And now I'm a vice president I could, and I'm a nurse. I think that was enough for me. I never thought about actually leaving the full profession of nursing. Then it's never crossed my mind to do that. It's kind of just who I am. So, um, what? How do you think life is harder or easier for kids now mm. days than it was when we were growing up? Well, <clears throat> I think of that a lot. I think of that a lot. I have forty-five nieces and nephews, and about twenty-five great nieces and nephews. And I think your world is much, much harder than our world was um, for a lot of different reasons. I think that we never thought of our, we never thought of safety. I mean, we didn't ever fear for our lives. I mean, it was, I mean, we didn't even think about that. And now there's so much bad things that are happening in the world that that fear and anxiety must kind of cross your mind when you hear all of this stuff. We didn't have that. We, we felt we lived in a pretty safe world. And um, I, it wasn't such a complex world. You know, I had three choices. <laughs> I, I mean, there was only really three careers that were out there that I, would, that I considered. I mean, I could have gone into something different, sure. But now, you kids can do whatever you want. I mean, there, there's got to be hundreds and thousands of careers or professions that you can choose from. Plus, we had no connectivity to, I mean, we, we, I was raised in a small community. I mean, I didn't know anybody from Madison. I didn't know anybody from Milwaukee or Minneapolis. And now you get on your little computer and you can talk to anybody around the world. Well, we couldn't do that, and that kept us very isolated. Of course, we didn't know that, but, I mean, now you guys can speak different languages. You can talk to people who are of different diverse backgrounds and try to understand where how their lives are we just weren't exposed to it so there's pluses and minuses but to say I mean I'm curious um, how you look at your world and I mean how do you how do you sift through all your opportunities I mean I knew from the very beginning I wanted to be a nurse I don't know how somebody of your age decides I want to be a photographer I don't know how you come to that because you can do anything. So um, I think it's it's a tougher world for you guys. Plus, I think you have a lot of peer pressure and competition. And uh, we didn't belong to. I mean, I lived on a farm. We didn't we didn't join baseball game baseball teams and basketball teams and soccer teams and uh, it wasn't. We just couldn't do it because um, we had work to do. Now when I listen to what the kids are involved, do you ever have a night off? I mean, hockey, baseball, um, ballet, plays, um, you name it. I mean, do you ever go home and just do nothing? Yeah. Well, not so much. Not really. Yeah, I'm busy pretty much every night. Yeah, most of the time I don't get home till night. Don't you get tired? I mean, I worry about that. I mean, the speed of the work. Your work life is going to be like that. When you're kids, you should have some time to play. Um, but when I talk to some of my nieces and nephews, especially my great nieces and nephews, they'll say, well, what do you do? What do you mean play? <laughs> I, I mean go outside and play hide and seek. Well, they don't know what that is. Um, they don't, you know, they, they're disconnected with things that you would create yourself. We played hide and seek. We played. Um, we might play kickball or baseball or Red Rover, Red Rover, that kind of stuff. But we we didn't have tools to do it. We just play, you know. Now they'll say, "Well, do you have a Game Boy? Do you have a computer? Do you have iPods?" Do you? And I'm like, you know, do you ever do anything that is just for you? You know, you guys. Of course, you know, you must go hiking and stuff, don't you? Yeah. Biking. Yeah. So you kind of do some of that stuff. I just don't think you are allowed to do enough of it, you know, because we want to push you through. And I don't know what we're trying to create here is Einstein's or... I mean, you do a lot of studying. You do a lot of reading, don't you? Yeah. I'm pretty much in sports every night, so... 
Well, I'm supposed to, but uh, I don't. <laughs> well, on oh, my yeah. free time, I, like, in the last week, I've gone through two books. Ooh, Just you like to read. Home. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, in my free time, I, free time, I study and I do my homework, but I don't have a lot of free time. Do you like the free time, or? I like it, but I don't like to do, like, homework and stuff like that. Yeah, I like to play during it. But okay. I never do my homework because I have no other time to do anything. Yeah. 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 I watch my free time. I pretty much play sports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty much all I do. Or, mm -hmm. Well, when I'm not doing my homework and stuff. And you must like sports. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you love sports, yeah. that's one thing. But I see some parents trying to push people yeah. into um, sports when they really don't yeah, want to do that. You know, I, I mean, and I don't, I don't know if that's good for our kids. I think that y you got to find out what you makes you happy. What makes you um, fulfilled? And I think sometimes our parents are pushing kids too hard too hard so yeah um, well uh were you ever in any organizations as you were little or and if, are you in any now i mean i'm in a lot of organizations now um actually i'm president-elect of the girl scouts of the riverland council i never was a girl scout i we i didn't belong to organizations other than the church you know we if you call it, an, I, I guess that's kind of an organization. But I wasn't uh, a Girl Scout, and I, you know, people go, well, weren't you part of the 4-H um, groups? No. Now, a lot of people my age would have been. I, I don't know. We just never did that. We had, we, we couldn't, we didn't have time to do that. We were taking care of old cows and, you know, harvesting crops and, that was our entertainment, so not now. But but now I'm belonging to a lot of organizations, and I put this whole packet together for you so you can kind of use that down the road. I don't need to recite to you, but I'm involved in a lot of nursing organizations, okay? And I'm involved in some management organizations. But on the community level, I'm involved in Rotary and Girl Scouts, um, and I serve on their boards. Um, I do belong to some community activities um, like the lacrosse symphony and those kind of things. I bet Mary kind of filled you through. She's, she belongs to everything. Um, but I still work full time so I don't have time to do a lot of the organizations that I'd like to. It's just I don't have time to do that right now. But in the future, yeah. Um, like if you were to be honored for something in your life, what would you want it to be? Well, I've been honored for nursing twice, um, Wisconsin uh, Nursing Executive of the Year, twice. Um, so that uh, that's enough of that. Um, I think, uh, the, well, I mean, I don't know about honoring. I guess what I give to give back to the community. So I think, like, there are awards that say um, that are community awards that recognize your contribution to whatever kids um, communities, and I think that's something that probably would be nice to do, have. Um, I'm not real award driven. <laughs> Some people like all these awards, but I have a pile of awards in my basement, and that's where they are. I mean, I don't, I don't put them on a big wall, or I just not like that. Some people like that, need that. I, I'm not real like that so um like you said that you had nurse it over there were mm -hmm. you expecting to get this, those awards um not really not really both of them the first one was when I was a manager interesting manager it was about five six years ago and um, then last year I was recognized again as Wisconsin State Nurse um, Leader, and I'm in a different role. So, but neither one of them, I, did I expect it? No, I, I really didn't. I mean, it was my colleagues actually nominated me, and that's how I got them, so. As a child, what were some of your hobbies? Um, I had um, a horse, so I did, I did quite a bit of horseback riding, and, um, I played the cello, 
I don't know if that's a hobby, but I liked music and was involved in the Aquinas Orchestra, and I liked singing, so I was involved in the Viterbo Chorale, and I, um, other hobbies perhaps would be just being in nature, so I like plants and flowers, and um, I created a fishing pond, and I love fishing, I love fishing to this day, and I know some people don't like that, but I like fishing because it's quiet, and it's very noisy world. I live on 23rd Street. The bus drives by that. Drives me crazy. See, when you live, when you grow up on the on a farm, at night, there's no noise. There's crickets, <laughs> and that's it. Um, so when I moved to La Crosse, into my own home, the noise kind of bother still bothers me. And I like the quiet. So fishing's a big. I like that a lot, and uh, being in nature. So hiking and biking and I like golfing I'm not real good at it though you guys golf you haven't started that yet yeah eh, you golf. will do you play mini golf yeah well you'll eventually you might golf yeah so I, I kind of put um, my sister Donna Cuda is an artist and she did this for each one of us but she kind of put together a collage of our interests um, I do have a chocolate lab which She's a challenge, but so, um, so she did that. She's an artist, and um, she taught at Aquinas. She's very good. She, you know that there's a statue down by the pump house that blew their blue dancers. She she uh, did that. So she's very talented. I always th- I was always kind of envious. I'm not as talented in art as she is. My other sister, who is um, a Franciscan nun, the oldest sister, plays harp, and um, she's very musical. I mean, she's taught music for a long time, and now is playing harp to people to help them relax, and does a lot in the hospitals and stuff. So, what effect did the time period that you grew up in um, influence your you to be a nurse? Hmm. Um, I think probably, you know, your first question about (laughs) where you were raised, I think when you're on a farm, you are always taking care of somebody. You're taking care of animals. Um, That giving back is probably why I became a nurse, because I wanted to give back. I wanted to care for and um, so I think that my nursing, why I went into nursing perhaps was two things. One, the background of farming, and two, um, uh, being raised in the Catholic religion, of course, you know, you're taught to give back. And um, so I think those two kind of motivated me towards nursing. Um, well, did you look up to any, like, certain family member more hmm. than others? Um... Yeah, see, I was the baby of 12. <laughs> so my oldest brother could have been my dad. I mean, we were spread out that far. Um, when I was born, my oldest sister was no longer at home. She was in the convent. And I should show you this. Um, now this isn't a real good picture, but this is our family. And Sister Melinda, who's my oldest sister, is that's when she graduated from... I, yeah, they got their white veil. Yeah. And so I'm the baby in the center. That's um, Your eyes are better than me, so you should be able to see that. I'm sitting there with... <laughs> but I brought you some kind of fun pictures. Like this is... Um, we would we had chickens. Well, we had pigs and chickens and cows and you name it. But we always had to wash the eggs. You had to wash each egg before you put them in their cartons to be taken to the... So that's my mom and me. Um, when I was one, this is when I was one. I was born, I was big baby, 12 pounds. Uh, walked when I was nine months old. But that's my first birthday. And here's my first dog, Homer. And uh, so I thought those were kind of fun. I think um, probably the, a big influence on my life has been... Um, Probably the sisters more than the brothers. 
I know that sounds weird, but there's oh, there's five of us, and um, we're very close. Um, the brothers were always there, but I don't know. I don't. That's a, it's a very good question. I think uh, my sister Betty is more, perhaps more of a mother to me than my because my mother was. When I was born, she was already in her, she was like 45. So do you see the difference? And um, here I am fishing out on, uh, it's kind of fun. And um, here's all my graduation pictures. I don't know if you're interested in that. This is my great niece. So I wanted to give you the span of things. Um, so, yeah, my family has had a huge influence on me. We're, uh, unless you've grown up in a large family, how many how many kids you got? Just me. Just you? Oh, my God. I always feel sorry for those people that just, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, should I? I have a very good friend who is the only child, and I would always take bring her to, I would have her come to our family holidays because, like, for Christmas, not so much anymore because mom and dad are gone, but when we had a family gathering, there was always at least 50, if not 60 people. So you go to her family, and it's her and her mom and dad. Okay, that's exciting. Um, so I feel bad for people who are only children. I mean, it's so much fun. It's lonely. Yeah, it's really, really fun to grow up in a large family. I mean, now, there's stuff that you don't get because you're in a large family, but you always have someone to play with. You always have someone to talk to. And um, we would, we all played musical instruments, so we had our own band kind of thing. And uh, if we played ball, you didn't have to go look for a team that was running right there. <laughs> um, so it was, it was different times, and that was, I loved being a big family. I don't think you'll ever see that again. It's because it's so costly. Not as much. Yeah. You know, now a big family would be what four? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four. How many do you have? Uh, just, uh, I got a brother. You got a brother. All right. I have two older brothers. Okay. See, two, and how many? A younger brother and an older brother. Okay, so three. Yeah. You need a sister. <laughs> Don't tell your parents that. My mom thinks that she needs a girl. She knows that the next one will be a boy. Well, then. Because the doctors told her all the three of us would be girls. Really? Oh, you need a boy. You need a girl. There you go. All right. What other questions you got? Um, as you said of how you, when you were younger, you worked on a farm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever want to become a veterinarian? Mm. You know, I never did. But that is interesting because we sure did a lot that could have led me to that. Um. And the veterinarians would come, you know, um, help us deliver calves or um, immunize the animals. Um, but, you know, I never had that, that I wanted to do that. That's a good question, though. You want to be a vet? It's a great job. Um, you have to know almost more than, well, in some respects you have to know more than a physician of human beings because... When I talk to our vets, have you talked to vets? Mm -hmm. They they have to know all these animals, <laughs> and um, I always think it's it's a hard course, you know, because you have to know so much. But um, yeah. like if wait, like and how do you like think? Life is different today than it's ever been. Hmm. I guess I wasn't prepared for all the technology. Um, you know, I grew up with. There was one TV. We didn't watch it all the time. It was just black and white, pretty not too exciting. Um, and now I think the the huge increase of technology, so iPods, and um, you have, you know, we had eight tracks, um, now you have DVDs, you have CDs, you have, uh, you're downloading, and I, I, I really didn't think, you know, because we couldn't even imagine that, 
And so I think that's probably been the biggest impact for me. Now, do I know how to operate everything? Pretty good, but not probably as good as you guys do. Because, you know, you, you're growing up with it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like cell phones, um, we had we had a party line. We had a phone, um, but it was a party phone, party line. That you probably don't even know what that is. Um, so, like, all the people that lived up on Granddad belonged to the same line. So when you picked up the phone, one of the other neighbors could be using it. <laughs> so you could listen. Well, that's just bad. But you could listen into other people's conversations. So you had to be very careful what you said on the phone <laughs> because people could listen in on. And so you had to wait your turn to use the phone. So we, as kids, we didn't use the phone very much. Um, our parents didn't think we should be on the phone, number one. And um, it was used for business or or emergencies, and that was about it. But now, you kids, how many of you all have cell phones, don't you? Uh, Not I, yet? I, I don't, but my cousin who's like seven has one. My <laughs> little brother's eight and he has one. Really? I have one. You might need one, but... My brother has one, so I don't really need one. I use it most of the time. So. Hmm. Everybody in my family has one, but my little brother only uses it like when he goes away from events. Yeah, so you stay in touch. Yeah. Well, there's good things about the cell phones. Yeah. There's also bad things. Um, I think it's um, it's hard to go to a restaurant and have everybody answer their cell. That's that noise piece that drives yeah. me crazy. I just. Yeah. Now, do I carry a cell phone? Yeah, I got one right here. Uh, but um, the other thing that I need one of you guys to teach me is the technology of text messaging because I don't under I don't know how to do it. I I do it all the time. So do I you? Could teach you? That'd be great uh, because I don't know. I was thinking about getting one of those um, Blackberries. Is that That's what you call what them? My mom yeah. has. And you do a lot of text message on those. Oh, like they do everything, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to have to have you, I'm going to have to find, come over and you can teach me. <laughs> <laughs> I know for you it's just like falling off a rock, I suppose. You pick up a new piece and you can figure it out right away? Pretty much. And my mom is like into computers. So oh. I have her technology sense of style in my brain. Wow. So. That is, you know, that is a gift. I should put you by some, see I said we should hire all you guys or at least work with you to have you work with our old docs because our physicians who are older really don't like the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and you could do that. You could sit down there and enter it. I mean, show them how to use it. I think they're, it, it sounds funny to you, I bet, that people are afraid of the computer. Not afraid, afraid. They don't know how to use it. They don't know how to use it. And so they think they can, especially when you're documenting something like a patient's care, they're afraid, a couple things, one, that it won't be accurate, it, you know, something will screw up and they'll lose the information, um, or the piece about confidentiality. So who's, who's got access to this information? So all that, you know, will go away eventually, but right now you've got a lot of people my age or older that are very uncomfortable with computers. So you guys will be very valuable, yeah. very valuable. Um, if you could do, like, any part of your life over, what would, what would you want it to be? What would you do? The piece that I envy you guys that we didn't have was the opportunity to travel, I mean, to get educated in other countries. I think that is the coolest thing. Um, I, would go have, I would go to college outside of La Crosse. I would not go to college in La Crosse. Um, which most of, I think most of the kids are doing that now. I don't think they stay in the same town that they were raised to go to college. Um, and I probably would have spent, done more work outside of where I was born and raised because I think that that has kept my f focus narrower. You're going to see everything. You're going to either see it on the Internet or you're going to experience it. I mean, you're going get, to get to go to Chile for a semester or... Europe. <laughs> I know that's costly, but it's very interesting how parents are encouraged to help kids do that. And either you'll do it in high school or you'll do it in college. You certainly will do it sometime in your lifetime. You're going to travel somewhere. It's a rare phenomenon, I bet, that kids don't travel around the world or do something. Yeah. 
you know, my I've got a nephew that uh, for a long period of time, like for him was a long time, for four years he worked in um, Japan as a computer, I don't know. Computer technologist. Yeah. And he loved it. He loved it, and um, he had no fear of other people. He, you know, he couldn't speak Japanese, but he said they're all the same. I mean, if I take you and I take you kids and I put you in Europe, you get along with all the kids because they think just like you. I mean, that's the piece that I I, I would have liked to have experienced. So, um, like for that, like family stuff, did you have any son or daughters? No, I'm not married. Um, I have a dog. <laughs> I think you know people go. Why did you never get married? Well, you know. Um, my mother always said, you know, it'll happen if, if it's meant to be. I mean, I have a lot of good friends that are males. Um, I just didn't have the time. It's, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? But I, I worked uh, a lot of hours, and I still do. I mean, I work 10 to 12 hours a day. And f I know that sounds really weird, but I don't think people would... A husband and children not would not tolerate 10 and 12 hours a day very long. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. no, I don't have any kids. Um, like, for younger, when you were younger, mm -hmm. like, you said that it was, like, the one black and t white TV. Mm -hmm. Do you, if you didn't see any, like, television shows, do you think, like, they influenced you or made you think differently than you would have if you didn't? Um, probably. Now, you got to remember what kind of shows there were. Um, they were a lot of family shows. Um, Leave it to Beaver, I don't know. Um, and then there were, the, like, this um, Ed Sullivan show. So they that's the entertainment you saw. Like, you saw the Beatles and that kind of stuff. It didn't have as much influence because we didn't watch it very much, you know. Where you kids, man, you see it all. I mean... You see everything instantaneously. When there's something that happens in the world, we would have never known it. I mean, other than the newspaper. But you guys see it. So you, we, we, like this latest incident with uh, Virginia Tech, we, we wouldn't have known about it other than in the paper. You guys, the minute it happens, there it is. And so the influence of the media on us was nothing compared to what it is on you. And I think that's a lot of research is being done on that. What influences you to playing those game boys? Am I saying that right? <laughs> does that influence you? I don't know. I mean, maybe it does. Maybe it does. But it didn't influence us very much. Music, there was a lot of music. So that influenced us, I guess, to some extent. Um, like, whatever other jobs have you done other, or besides the nursing? Um, actually, only farming. Um, I really have never liked, that's the other thing I probably would have done differently is I never, like, was a checkout at Quillen's. I, I mean, I think it would be really cool to work at Barnes and Nobles, but, um, I really haven't had any other jobs, which, you know, that sounds weird, but I didn't, I guess I didn't ever have to. Um, there was always a nursing job of some type or another. So. Um, what's, like, one thing that you couldn't live without? Oh, boy. Um, hmm. You know, as you get older, you don't need as much. Um, I probably couldn't live without friends. And, you know, family, because family, my family, our friends, everything else, any mat I don't need any material things. I've got plenty. I've got more than enough. Um, but I think people, family and friends, and I think religion, I, could I live without it? Well, I don't need a church to go to, but I need some something out there that's meaningful. And to me, you can find that in nature, you can find that in religion, you can find that in your families and your friends. Uh, but i got to have that. 
other stuff, no. I'm trying to think how it would be, though, to be without a car. That, that might be a little hard. But could I do it? Probably. It changed my life. Um, could I do it without a cell phone? Probably. Mm -hmm. And TV. Um, like... Well, how do you feel about the war that's hmm. going on right now? Iraq? Yeah. Um, it's kind of scary because I don't think we get it. Um, I'm not sure that anybody can solve the war because that war has been going on since the time of Christ. <laughs> it's when we don't fully understand, I can't understand, and I think the people in the United States don't understand what the disagreement is. And it's to us, to me, and I'll talk about myself, the war in Iraq is based out of how the Iraqis do their leadership succession. And there's two groups of people who out of their religion say, this is the way we should elect our, our leaders. And this other group says, no, this is the way we should do it. That started that whole thing. It's, it, it, should we be involved in it? I, I think not. not. Not militarily. I think we should be involved in it, but in a different way. And that is not by blowing each other apart because that's they do that really well. Um, I think we should do it through education and w taking care of them and being and health care and helping that kind of things. I don't think we're achieving anything by killing each other. I I just don't. And um, I understand why we're over there. I don't think we can win a war over there. Um, because we don't understand those people. We don't understand their culture. And they're going to have to deal with that. It's like our, in, in the United States, if we would have the Iraqis come over here and try to figure out the war between Democrats and Republicans, it wouldn't work. They don't understand it. Or our problem with racism. Other countries can't help us with that. They really have a civil war, and we're trying to intervene our I ideals and values on them, and they're like, you're nuts. So I'm not a proponent of the war. Would I go out and, you know, carry a banner and say stop the war? I'm not that, I'm not that far over. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, but I do think, I, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know who will get us out of the war. It, it's pretty hard. Because we may, may not have oil, you know. No cars. <laughs> um, like, what were some of your role models? Like hmm. Sister Thea Bowman, I actually put her down. She taught me in when I was at Viterbo. Um Because she had a freedom about herself. Um, my mother... My mother was very um, strong influence in my life. She taught me uh, core values and how to uh, use your talents to give back to people. Um, Sister Grace Claire was the head of the nursing program at Viterbo when I entered. She had a big influence on my life. Um, my sister Betty has a big influence on my life and um, there was some of course bosses and leaders who um, helped me become the nurse and leader I want to be so good people like that uh, like for what are, what did you do for like, the community um, I think now that I'm in for the last four years, I've been much more involved in the community because my job allows me to do that. Um, I'm involved with my church. I'm involved with the Girl Scouts, uh, Rotary. Um, I do a lot of um, 
education on generational diversity. So I go speak to different work groups. And um, I think, you know, I'm, full, I'm involved um, in legislation and politics to an extent, not certainly to the extent I'd like to be, but um, there is a limit on time. So that's kind of how I'm involved. Um, what organizations would you like to help? Um, I probably would like to get more involved with the League of Women's Voters. Um, if I had more time. Um, I'm glad that I'm involved with the Girl Scouts. I, I probably would like to get more involved with um, groups like you guys in doing some exploration on how to deal with all the pressures that you guys have to go through and help you do some career choices. And um, otherwise, I'm pretty happy and content. Mm -hmm. um, as a little girl, picture yourself in your favorite scenery at your farm or wherever you wanted to be. Describe what you see. Huh. Um, okay. I see um, a lot of trees and I would go to a place that still exists is up on, on Grand Ed but it overlooks the valley and you it looks down towards um, Smith Valley which you guys wouldn't know but um, the mall area you can see the mall from this spot and there's these large oak trees and large hickory nut trees, a lot of grass, um, the sound of nature, so a lot of birds and the aroma of fresh mown hay. I love that smell. And um, sunshine, cool breeze, no bugs. I hate bugs. But <laughs> That's kind of, you got to kind of take the bad and with the good, but that would be my, and no noise, no noise. So. Okay. This podcast brought to you from across Wisconsin by the Cooler Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.